Welcome back to another episode of Elite Landscapes Life Stories. We have officially been on YouTube for four months, and we have 108 videos for you guys to sit back and enjoy when you have the spare time. We don't want to take you away from important stuff that needs to be accomplished, but hey, you can learn a lot from these videos, and there's some killer views of all these properties that I work on. This video today, <laughs> just like all the rest of these, it's just a lot of hard work, and we'll go through how to accomplish it successfully in the correct ways. We're going to do a little voiceover on these trees that we're going to trim today. They are ornamental trees. Need to be trimmed, maybe not every year, but every so often for sure. First tree that we're trimming on here is a crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle grows in abundance. You can trim it back as far as you want and it will always grow back. You can nub it down to the ground, you'll have a new tree next year. That being said, some people call this trimming technique crepe murder because you murder the natural look of the tree. Some of these trees just get too big in the areas that they are planted in and they need to be trimmed down, especially when they start hanging over parking lots, over your porch that you're sitting on. They really drop a lot of debris. So the crepe myrtles, they do get murdered back, but guess what? Ha, <laughs> that thing ain't never gonna die just from trimming it. I promise you that. Something else is gonna take that thing out for it to die. This tree here on the left is a Rose of Sharon. The Rose of Sharon grows very quickly when you trim it back. This growth here is a couple years worth. And when we start trimming on this tree, I had Ian go around and do all the outside growth suckers that had come up from the bottom of the trunk and grown. So we got rid of all those already. When I started this cut, I got up in there right in the middle and I eyeballed where my last cut was and I went slightly above it. And then we just worked our way from that middle cut to the outsides to try to keep the nice shape to it. The Rose of Sharon's have beautiful blooms. They bloom out late in the season. And you can trim these guys back as much as you want. You can trim them back every single year. I have a lot of properties that I do trim them back every year because of the location of the actual bush, tree, shrub, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, I prefer to have shrubs in their natural state. But that's not possible. These days, we have to trim stuff back. Mother Nature provides, and they grow back. Well, that was like a hour and 20 minute mission for that bed and those three trees. I don't trim back. It's been a couple of years since I trimmed these back. Probably about four. So they needed it. Um, I'm go up here and trim that hydrangea tree. And uh, yeah, I already did most of the trimming all the way around the house over there while they were busy. So, yeah. First thing you do, stand back, get a visual of what you want this thing to look like when you're done. I saw where my cut mark was. I go right in the middle. I make it that height. From that point, after I've got that established where I want, right in the middle of that tree, you can go to town then. Snip away. Now, this hydrangea tree when you're making your cuts on these branches, you'll see the new nodes that the new growth come out on. You wanna trim right above those new nodes. That way the new growth next year will come out right below where you made that cut. On this tree here, it gets really, really heavy with blooms and it tends to wanna to fall over. And it also gets so big around this area, like I was just talking about, you know, you just gotta trim them back. This tree will regrow next year, it would be beautiful, and it will bloom out again. It has every single time I've trimmed it in the past. 
after I go around and get the main cuts on this tree and get the height done, you'll see me go around and just meticulously go through the whole, all the branches. And when I do that, I'm going through and getting rid of any of the dead stuff that doesn't need to be there, any branches that are going to regrow going sideways instead of up, I go ahead and trim them off. Because your mission is to have the least amount of sideways growing branches and more upright branches on almost all trees that you that you trim on. I mean, that's the way you make them look good. Now this job wrapped around the entire house. Uh, the client's children had went ahead and trimmed a lot of the major trimming back for us already. You can go back to some other videos and see some gorgeous, huge banana trees and tropical plants growing around here. Beautiful property. So go back through the videos and you'll find it. That being said, I didn't get a lot of footage from everything else. So that was 20 minutes to trim that tree. Clean it up. The hydrangea tree. Yeah. Little Nandina. Little Japonica. I'm not sure if they're mountain fire Japonica or a different kind. Of, yeah. There's that bed. Got the whole front cleaned up. There was a whole lot more of that job, but I didn't film it and I didn't talk about it because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> Hope we got some good footage. At any rate, y'all be good. Peace.